Hello, and welcome back to This is the Police. Uh, this is now, I don't even know what episode anymore, uh, but I'm going to keep continuing the series. Uh, thanks for watching if you uh, have watched all the previous ones, or any of the previous ones, and uh, thanks for picking it up here if this is your first one. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. Alright. A small drug dealer invades Freeburg. All city hall employees awarded company cars for personal use. There's so much corruption in this city that I love that it's in the newspaper and like nothing happens to the newspapers. Freeburg to host semifinals of youth hockey league. I wonder how much is relevant to um, the what you can do. All right, shift A. That's some of my best cops. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything in the catalog I want to buy. Um, let's buy this train. This train by Turk, Turk Murphy. Okay. Request result. Oh, I can now hire one more police officer. Alright, so in shift A, I have a lot of good cops. Shift B, shift B could use another. Trespassing farm. Bill Bucker reports that two unidentified men stuck onto his farm and set fire to the barn. As the call came in, the two criminals were attempting to get entry into the house. Uh, I'm gonna send a high level cop, Grant, and Millsap. I need Millsap to get more experience, I guess. I hope they don't take, like, have an event for the city that takes three of my cops away again. I don't know why she's so tired. Seems to have alcohol problems. Is that a political brew? No. Ah, uh, that's why she's tired. Uh, no, no. Why does nobody have political views? Huh? There are no signs of the criminal near the house. The front door has been broken down, and the shadow lurks inside. I'm gonna take. Come out with your hands up. Oh, okay. He came out with his hands up. What about the civilian? Theft, every day more. A drug addict attempted to hide an expensive bottle of liquor under his jacket. When he was caught, he began to throw a fit. <laughs> mm, I stole alcohol. I should have used my alcohol. Mm. Um. Oh, Heron can handle that by himself. Because he's the main. He's a higher man. A higher man. Hanra Hanan. Hanra Hanan. His name is intense. Boom, he died. <laughs> Jack, one of our new guys tried to rape our accountant. We locked him up in a hotel room, but he's threatening to hand the whole organization over to the police. I think it's time he talks to the police officer face to face. And Robbins. He's like, they actually are doing crimes. That's the thing that, like, things I'm upset about. I mean, you shouldn't be raping anybody. Uh, so, I mean, like, you could just say, hey, this is an attempted rape. Oop. He gets put in jail. You know? Jack, there's something going down at City Center at 8.39. We wouldn't any policeman be closing, crashing the party. I think $1,000 should be good for such requests see what it is. I didn't see what time it was. I didn't pay attention. I said the time. I didn't pay attention. Assault with a deadly weapon. A woman reports that she saw a skinhead attacking a dark skinned valet, striking him around the legs, yelling, I'll beat you till you're dead, freak. I'm gonna do it. She believes she saw a pistol sticking out of the skinhead's belt. 
All right, I'm gonna send my these these four. It'd be cool if you could you believe provided the police vehicles, not just a paddy wagon. Which well, that was a negative term. Oh well. Ooh. The situation is more serious than we thought. Requesting reinforcements. Let's send Robbins in Millsap. Because it's not very far, so. Ooh. A man in an expensive suit is lying in the street. Seems he's been shot, but no one saw who shot him or from where. The man is still alive, and an ambulance is on the way. The ambulance is on the way. Why do I need to go? I think this is the one that he wanted me to ignore. I'm gonna sound a cop anyway. $1,000 isn't worth it. Somebody's gonna die on this one, I think. Six cops. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Civilians unharmed. Ten experience. Nine, ten, eight, Ooh. Progress. Um. Officer on. Oh. Man has just been placed on a stretcher when another shot rings out. This time the shooter finishes the job. His firing position could not be determined, but the shots are clearly coming from one of the skyscrapers. 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 Could not be determined, but the shots are clearly coming from one of the sky. Uh, rush to the skyscraper. Uh oh. Scans. Sand is gonna be mad at me. Hey, yo, Kevin's home alone, hiding under the bed. Unknown persons are gathered outside the apartment door. I don't know why you did it, but we hope you had a good reason. Don't forget who your friends are. You don't want any more trouble. <clears throat> Pay me a little more if you're gonna kill a man in the middle of the street. Thousand dollars is gonna make me go. <laughs> he doesn't matter. The situation is more serious than we thought. You know what? Just because I think it's the end of the night, I'm going to send Robins and Powers. Batman and Robin. There's been a lot, there was a lot of, like, small things that turned into bigger things um, today. I couldn't imagine working this many hours and having to help people out. Fender caught. Who? What was going on? Be nice if you were more clear about what was going wrong. End the day. There hasn't been a story element in a few days. Oh, I lied. In my new role as corrupt official, I had to give up some of my favorite habits. I couldn't turn off my phone when my head ached. Couldn't sleep till noon on Saturday and let the rest of HQ take up the slack. No more days off to go fishing. But my weekly visit to the old colony club was more like tradition. One night a week, I absorbed cigar smoke, the vague smell of alcohol, the stench of urine, all mixed with toxic levels of old drunken belches. Same picture it was 30 years ago. Tradition's got to be honored. And to stay faithful to the tradition, you've got to respect the standard rituals. When you're about to roll out of the club, you need to take a deep breath and count to a hundred. If your stomach doesn't do a backflip, you should be good to make it home. This time, I only got up to sixty. I was interrupted. Why? You look even better than you do on TV. There's nothing more impolite than approaching people in the alley at the old colony. This is the most private place in the city. All who enter here dirty their shoes with the most elite stream of vomit in Freeburg. This asphalt has been blessed by judges, lawyers, <laughs> artists, businessmen, and all our politicians. Takes a lot of balls to crash the party. 
My head was a drunken haze, but I knew who he was. A cartoon gangster suit straight out of Dick Tracy. Fancy voice, fruit cologne, sassy strut. That's how the newspapers described Vikis Varga, rising star in Freeburg's criminal underworld. He appeared out of nowhere, and with the support of the local punks, Varga broke all the old rules of organized crime. He killed those who could not be killed, traded what could not be traded, and robbed those who could not be robbed. In just a single month, this man had gathered an incredible amount of power. He's been called everything from a clown to a madman to a criminal genius, and more often than not, he's called a low-class upstart short on ideas. But if Vargas was one of the old crime bosses, he'd have been cut into pieces and fed to the river. Look past this guy's arrogance and there's something about him. The city is still deciding what to do with him. Meanwhile, he's burning down the houses of old city mobsters. Not the best time to talk, Mr. Varga. Well, you know my name. I'm flattered, although not very surprised, to be honest. I might be a little short on manners. Like they say in your fair city, with the right manners, you can go anywhere. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay right here. Even the criminal world needs manners, Mr. Varga. And one of them is this. Don't interfere with a drunken cop who's trying to take a shit and puke at the same time. What? Oh, you exaggerate. But is Freeburg always so gentle with its officers? You've been a bit roughed up lately. I see you already know Freeburg quite well, Mr. Varga. Well, I love to learn and look around. But I do know that the inhabitants of this fair city should be friends, Jack. Maybe it's true I don't have the best manners. After all, it's only polite for friends to share their phone numbers. This city of yours moves so fast. I feel like I'm hooked on amphetamines all over again. You wake up in the morning, full of ideas, and by nightfall, you've all had each other killed. So don't wait too long to call. I don't mind if you're drunk. It's all the more fun. I'll be stoned myself, most likely. Hell, I'm a little stoned right now. It's the only way to live in this place. I can tell what accent this guy has. I like your city, Jack. I'm here to stay. If it weren't for the phone number written on my arm, I probably wouldn't have remembered the conversation in the morning. But there was no reason to worry. I'd be getting a reminder soon. I don't understand, like, how come there's this big other mob boss now I haven't heard of. But, oh. Greek priest to be appointed head of Friedberg Orthodox Church. Orthodox priest bribe mayor. <laughs> Students volunteer to help farmers. This golden bird is uh, quite outgoing with their headlines. Oh. Is this about his wife? My morning ritual was plagued by the smell of Vicus Varga's fruity cologne. It was like the sharp citrus scent was chasing me around the house, as if Vickers was right there in my living room. When I finally realized the smell was coming from a big basket of oranges, it didn't put me any more at ease. I'd opened my door to lots of threatening mail, evidence of criminal wrongdoing, even a dead ferret or two. But fruit? Never. You the fruit uh. guy? Excuse me? Was it you that brought the basket of oranges? Nah, it was here when I arrived. Fine. So who are you? Today, I'm your driver. And uh, where are we driving? To work. That's it? Yeah, we have to make an important stop along the way. Where? The ranch. What ranch? Just the ranch. Fine. Uh, 
That's gonna make me make a decision. The morning seemed surreal, and I took in the magic. Why wreck it with meaningless chatter? As my tight-lipped chauffeur drove an hour through God knows where, I started to feel like I was in the middle of a bad dream, probably lying bloody and concussed in the alley behind the old colony club, my nose buried in a rotten orange peel. But no, this was no dream. The silence was real, the sound of the engine was real, the dust was real enough too. And there was the ranch over the horizon. It all seemed familiar. The Sand family's overbearing mansion has been the talk of the headlines for decades, but few have managed to get closer than a few miles. I guess I'm just lucky. Please don't make me make decisions. He's gonna make me make decisions. <laughs> I like all the dead animal uh, carpets laying over each other. I didn't know you took private meetings, Mr. Sand. Only if I expect good company. I'm surprised my company ranks at all. Today, yes. Today is a special day. So it seems. Do you often go to the old colony club, Jack? Every week. Meet any interesting people there? As a rule, no. Sometimes you make a date, right? Sometimes make new friends. Sometimes, uh... I guess. But that's not why I go. And why? I consider it a hobby. Hmm. A hobby? Do you know anything about my hobbies? Well, judging by the half-dozen animal skins I stepped on walking over here, it's not much of a reach to say you like hunting. Love it. Well, I say that now. It seemed so tedious when I was a child. Took ever so long. But now, I'm older. I've developed a new talent. Oh, what talent is that? Patience. Patience. <laughs> the will to wait for the right moment. Let's say you want a deer. You know, you deserve it. You've even decided what dishes its meat will go to and where you'll mount its horns. But to get that deer, you've got to wait. To sit in the bushes and stay nice and quiet. Professional hunters will tell you that the hunt is a rare craft. There are many rules. It's shrouded in mystery and ancient skill. Well, that's all complete nonsense. To get a deer, you just sit on the sidelines for a long enough time, pinpoint the moment when it's finally time to shoot. I learned the talent, Jack. But not like you, oh, Jack. You truly are the master. I don't understand. Oh, come on, Jack. Yeah. I know about the half million. I know your plan. Kendrick told me everything. Needless to say, I'm impressed. Oh. While some people learn to hold their breath for minutes on end and not to rustle the leaves too loudly, why you decided to just become the foliage. You turned yourself into a bush, surrounded by deer who've been so fruitfully multiplying for decades. But all this time you've held your rifle at the ready. Uh, forgive an old man his imagery, Jack. I have the heart of a poet, I confess. Look, I don't know what was said between you and Kendrick, but it sounds like you got it wrong. Oh, I think I understand everything just fine. And I think we understand each other quite well. Jack, in the coming war, we'll make excellent partners. What war? One war falls upon every generation. My grandfather drove out the Ambersons back when he was 27. My father destroyed that psychopath gangster, Boris Bell, when he was a sprightly 30. At 69, I'd begun to think my war had passed me over. But my time has come at last. Tomorrow, Vicus Varga declares war, and I'm obliged to answer. So, we're talking about Varga now. I don't know how he thinks. I don't even know whether he plans his actions or not. I can't divine his purpose. Hell, I don't even know where he comes from. He's a man not of our breed, wouldn't you say? But when he arrived here, I invited him in, told him we could work together. An official invitation, penned in my own hand, and written on some very expensive <laughs> paper. And can you imagine his reply? A fruit basket. What sense can be made of such a message? I guess it means whatever you want it to. 
Precisely. I'm late for work, Mr. Sand. You know, Jack, I could just give you half a million right now. Cash, whatever denominations you like. But I would never insult you so. If I went stalking my prey for so many years, I wouldn't want someone else to shoot it for me. I understand you, Jack. And I'll never ask you for anything that's contrary to your nature. Just think about our conversation. Think about it. No. And Let's call, call one of them. It's gonna eventually give me a decision to call Sand or uh, I forget his name right. Vince, Vincent? No. Fergus. Like I said, it's a whole new life, and I've had to give up some old habits. One of them, keeping away from things that don't concern me. Now I can't afford the luxury. This spotlight I'm under, concerns is all I got. No, see? No, see? See, the I don't know enough about Vicus to know if I'd like him. Sand hasn't really done too much bad. <sighs> I wish it had introduced this character more. I mean, it just introduced him in this story, and all of a sudden he's friends. I think I'm better off with Sand. Can I choose neither? Tell him it's Boyd. Uh, yeah. Piece of garbage. Should have told you to come back the next day, you douche. Let's go with the sexy... I need, I need this, this sexy... Kermit the Frogs. Hmm. Oh, 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 this is not sure. Oh, hope we don't disappoint. Don't anything happen until then. Oh, okay. He's gonna get assassinated or something. I don't even remember who the police officer is that... Or, the, it was a detective, wasn't it? Massive fight. Ooh! We received a call from the club manager who said that a brawl broke out in the main hall involving over 20 men. The security are keeping back because some of the combatants are carrying knives. Several wounded are already lying on the dance floor, but no one knows why the mayhem broke out. I need the paddy wagon. I think I should pull the SWAT in. I'm sending Kochi, Asano, Tsubaki, and Kochi is awesome. I don't know why, but she's my favorite. Wow, she's gonna get murdered on this outing. Um, you too. Assault. It's a suburb. I'm gonna let it go for a minute. I could probably shouldn't. Two teens walking their dog got an argument, and eventually one of them unleashed the dog on the other. The police were called by a girl who was riding her bicycle nearby. What a send party. I should have only sent one, because I like sending two cops on, a, on an outing. Everybody died. Oh no, somebody might have. Defender caught. Officers unharmed. Oh, civilians unharmed. Thank you. Okay, I need to wait for my cops to come back before I send it to this. Oh. The boy is struggling on the ground, barely half and angry that's trying to grab him. Fire shots in the air. The dog lets the boy escape and owner starts to flee. Run after him. Yeah, purdy.
Where is the man lady? Come on, come on, come on. Okay. <laughs> Homicide. Parishioner Mary Serpentine reports the sound of gunshots inside the church. A bearded man in hat enters confessional. And then Mary hears a few gunshots. Then the man calmly lifts the boot, took off his hat and crossed himself and sat down on a pew. I think he's praying. Uh, Trevor, it's gonna be something that's not too bad, so. Listen to this. I bet it's some kind of like story of a bad cop. I kind of wish they had like results of your call rather than just being like, oh, the offender was caught. Attempted murder. Linda Howard, her words slurred, said the dentist paralyzed her face during the last visit. The monster stuck me with some kind of poison. Arrest him. Eh, I'll send Tsubaki. I think it's a false alarm. Defender caught. Officers in harm. See, like, it should have been like, why was he? What was it? Oh. Loot found. Non automatic weapon. Bring back to the police station. Yeah, just sell it to the mafia. I know you'll notice. It'll be fine. Attempted murder. Normal painkillers. Yep, I called it. I don't know how big the razors are. An ice cream vendor noticed the suspicious black bag, which has been laying around on his eyes on the bench for the past two hours. Sano, Anderson, and Austin. He never told me not to do anything, so might as well send some cops. Boom, all of them dead. <laughs> go, 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 go. I think this will be the last call for tonight, but I'm not sure. Officer Red hmm. Sands, there's, there's something moving inside the bag. Oh, <laughs> sure, the bag itself stops moving. Open the bag. Offender caught. Officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. What was it? Was it a dog? Was it a baby? I like how there's like, you know, crash through the window front or shoot the person on sight. There's the please stop, and there's like the right, like the middle ground. It's like run at him. Uh, end the day. I think today was pretty successful. All right, I'm gonna end this here. Um, it sucks that I had to pick one side or the other. I would have liked to have known more about the other guy before it forced me into the decision. I wasn't too happy about that because I didn't I, like San seems real friendly in terms of a mafia boss but like he's been in office for a long time and the other guy's new to it and it seemed like he was just kind of crazy but thank you for watching and goodbye